kapatid, today is a happy day. Hindi lang po, it's not only because three of our um, beloved brethren, ano yung pangatlo palaging missing in action, three of our beloved brethren are uh, celebrating their birthday. So, blessed and happiest birthday po sa kanilang lahat. Amen? It is not, it's only the second Sunday of the year. So, uh, I think it's still very safe to say na, Happy New Year! Amen! But, today is a happy day because we are in the house of the Lord. Amen! Hallelujah! Can you tell your neighbors? Hello, Ellison! I'm happy that you are here today. No, I mean, tell your neighbors you are happy that they are here today. Amen? We are happy that you are here today. And Ellison, I'm happy that you are here today. Amen! Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Um, listening to the testimony, the testimony of Brother Lester earlier, I think it's all a challenge for all of us. Um, it's all a challenge. Siguro I'll pick up Brother Lester to represent us all, but I'll pick him up because he said that it's 48. So in two years' time comes the big 5-0. Amen. So, uh, meron pa tayong isang new year bago yung isang year. But it's a challenge to us that this is who we are now. Amen? This is who we are now. What would I be like in two years' time? What would I be like in two years' time? Regardless of you are still here in two years' time or alam ko may... Atat na mag for good in two years time. <laughs> so whether, ah, four years daw pala. So whether you are here or you will be back home in the Philippines or whether you are one of the Mars challenge, you are one aspiring to go to Mars as well. But my challenge is in two years time, rather less, in the year 50th, what would I be like? What would I be like in the concept of being closer to God? In the concept of growing in God? Because at the end of the day, my dear brothers and sisters, there are a lot of important things here in this world. Family is important. Your careers are important. Your relationship are important. Your financial security are important. Your education are important. Your plans in life are important. But at the end of the day, my dear brothers and sisters, when all things settled and down, there is only one thing that is important. And what is that? Our relationship with the Lord. Our relationship with the Lord. Amen, church? Let us pray. Most gracious Lord and heavenly Father, truly indeed, Lord, that it is a happy day because this is your day. This is your holy day, O God. A holy convocation offered to you. For six days, we can toil, we can labor. But Father, you have mandated that on the seventh day that we can rest from all this, that we can allocate this seventh day, Father God, as a day of rest for our uh, for ourselves, from our manual labor, but most importantly, a day, Father, for us to come together just to worship you and to honor you, Father God. And we thank you so much that we are here in your house, O Lord God, today. We thank you so much that we are in the midst and in the presence of our brothers and sisters today. And truly, Lord, we can vividly feel your presence among them. Thank you very much. Thank you how you have blessed us this morning using all the lives of your ministers, your people, Father God, who came to stand here in front, Father God, to minister and usher us in your glory Thank you so much, Father God. But Lord, we know that you are not finished yet. We know, Father God, that you are yet to reveal your 
plans and purposes for us today. And thank you so much that we can sit down, we can settle down, O Lord, and receive your words. We can settle down and hear from you, Father. For you have said in your word that faith cometh, faith grows by hearing and hearing the word of God. And thank you so much, Father God. We pray that you give us a receptive heart, receptive spirit for us to be able, Father God, to joyfully accept, Lord, your word, to joyfully welcome your word. But Father, give us that desire, Lord God, to go away and meditate and study these words to make sure that they are alongside and in line, Father, with your prophecies. We thank you so much. And Lord, we rebuke the works and wiles in the schemes of the enemy that will try to deter and hinder us in receiving your full measure today. As for your servant, Father God, I humble myself and I pray and I ask, I desire your covering so that, Lord, none of me, Lord, no part of me, Father God, will be considered but only the words, Father, that comes from you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Once again, welcome po sa ating lahat, yung mga kaibigan ni Sister Lucy. Welcome. We are happy that you are able to spend this day with us today. And obviously, Irene, welcome. Hallelujah. So my dear brothers and sisters, last Sunday we were talking about resolution. Amen? Resolution. And although the word resolution is be very fitted during New Year, Kaya nga nagkaroon tayo ng New Year's Resolution. But my dear brothers and sisters, the term New Year's Resolution as we have learned last Sunday is not in itself negative. The negative becomes our lack of capacity to sustain those resolution. Amen? And just to remind us, our definition of resolution, like what we have said, is a resolution is that firm decision to do something. Amen. So, it just simply means that if you desire to do something and you put your mind and your heart in it, that is a resolution. Amen. So, a resolution meaning it is our firm decision to do something. This is our determination or being resolute or being unwavering in the things that we want to do. Amen po. And we know that coming into Christ, we know that believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, we know that entering our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ or simply to be a Christian involves series of resolution. Amen. How do we become Christian? When we accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. Amen. So when you accepted the Lord Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, that is a resolution. Amen. That is a resolution because you are making that firm decision. Amen, church. Amen. So uh, I hope na when we talk about resolution, we are not being confused. Amen. So again, resolution is that firm decision. Our firm decision. Amen. And our goal, like what we have said last time, as a Christian, or if it's the first time that you have ever heard the Lord, or if you have heard the Lord before, but you are yet to come to a conclusion, decision to commit your life and self to the Lord, our goal, my dear brothers and sisters, is for us to develop, for us to secure, and for us to grow in our relationship with the Lord. Amen? And last Sunday, we learned, we have talked that we need to have that firm decision, that resolution to grow in worship. Nakita natin, as a life of a Christian, why is it worship is important? And why is it that we do not just have that worship in us, but why is it that we need to excel in worship? But we have learned as well last time that when we talk about worship, it is not all everything about music. Music is a very little fraction of worship. Amen. That is just a part of worship. 
And this Sunday, my dear brothers and sisters, we will be talking that coming into the footstep of Jesus. And Charlene already exhorted the youth. What was the word that you used, Charlene, in there? Kalimutan ko. Path or way? Uh, something along that lines. Yeah? That um, remember that path or remember that way where you have started and that is in the house of the Lord or that is in the church. Something along those lines. And Sister Grace as well exhorted us earlier in the book of Luke. At sabi ni Ate Grace dito kanina, that to deny ourselves, uh, to deny ourselves and follow Jesus daily. Amen. So it kind of jibe nice along our message today, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen po. So my dear brothers and sisters, we will talk about following in the footstep of Jesus. Amen. Are we ready? Are we ready to follow in the footstep of Jesus? Amen, church? Are we ready to follow in the footstep of Jesus? Actually, yung testimony ni Brother Lester dito. When Jesus Christ walked on this earth, following in His footstep, there's a lot of things in Jesus' mind. In His mind, the salvation of humanity, number one. In His mind, His ministry, healing the sick, multiplication, preaching the word, but my dear brothers and sisters, nakita natin that his top priority is talking with the Father. Talking with the Father. Amen? So tama yung sinabi ni Brother Les. That first we need to consult the Lord. First we need to conform it with the Lord. Amen? Kasi ang nangyayari ngayon, we conform to the pattern of the earth, this world. But now as a believer, we ought to confirm to the pattern of the Lord. Jesus is already God Himself in human form, but still, He keep on coming to the Father. Amen? So my dear brothers and sisters, let's learn today. Why is it that it is important for us to follow in the footstep of Jesus? Amen? Or the question even to us is, is it important to follow in the footstep of Jesus? Amen, church? Do we think that it is, an, it is important to follow in the footstep of Jesus? Amen? Amen? Why is it important? Why is it important, my dear brothers and sisters, to follow in the footstep of Jesus? Because this is who we are. This is who we are. This is the building blocks, my dear brothers and sisters, of why we call ourselves what we call ourselves. What do we call ourselves? Christians. Believers. Amen? In the Christian term, the word Christian was derived from a Greek word, Christianos. Meaning, sabi ni Brother Ramon dito, followers of Jesus Christ. Are we Christian? Amen? Are we Christian? And if we associate ourselves as one, yun po yung definition na nakatagline sa atin. We are following in the footstep of Jesus. Amen. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters, no? So the concept, my mga kapatid, the concept of following Jesus Christ is not a new concept. This is actually, mga kapatid, yung pinakauna that the Lord asked the believers. This is the very first concept that the Lord asked the believers. Bible readers, if you go back to your Bible, kung titignan natin Matthew, in the book of Matthew, if we look at the book of Matthew, it talks about in there how Jesus Christ was foretold, how Jesus Christ was to be born, what happened to Jesus, my dear brothers and sisters, up until they flew to Egypt, my dear brothers and sisters, at up until they came back, up until we found Jesus in the temple at the age of 12, teaching the Pharisees, amen, nakita natin yon. 
And up until that, it says in there, in chapter 3, Jesus and His family went back to Nazareth and they settled in Nazareth. And wala na po tayong recollection of what happened to Jesus then. The Bible did not explicitly tells us what happened to Jesus. But if you can have a look at in chapter 3, Jesus came out when He was age 30. He was walking in the Jordan River. John was baptizing in there and he came to be baptized. Amen? He came to be baptized. Wala pa pong Kristiyano dati. There are no Christian yet. So what happened? When Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River, he was ushered by the Holy Spirit in the wilderness to be tempted by the enemy. Amen? When he was victorious in that temptation, chapter 4, makikita natin, Jesus went out of the wilderness. Makikita natin, my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus was walking in Galilee and He saw two men. He saw two person. Amen. Brother Alan and Brother Lester. Ito sila yung mahilig mag-fishing. He saw two fishermen. Ay, mahilig palang mag-fishing si Kuya Will. Aso dalawa lang yung nakita niya dun muna nung umpisa. He saw two fishermen. That is Peter and his brother Andrew. Amen. And what did the Lord Jesus told Peter and Andrew? If you put up in uh, Matthew chapter 4, verse 19, Gab. What did Jesus told Peter and Andrew? Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. So kung titignan natin mga kapatid, it is very safe to say na si Peter at saka si Andrew yung unang Christians. It is very safe to say that Peter and Andrew were the first Christians. Meaning, Peter and Andrew were the first followers of Jesus Christ. Because when Jesus saw Peter and Andrew, He called them by saying, Come, tinawag nila. Come, He called them and He gave them that invitation. Follow me. Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, no? Makikita natin na Peter and Andrew were the very first Christians. Amen? And makikita natin mga kapatid that after a while, no? Makikita natin after a while, if we open our Bible in 1 Peter 2.21, 1 Peter 2.21, it says in here, this is Apostle Peter, yeah? To this, you were called because Christ suffered for you. No, To this, you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in His footstep. Amen. So mga kapatid, I just want to quickly summarize. Sabi ko nga, Peter and his brother Andrew were the very first person that were offered by Jesus to say, come follow me. And we know, my dear brothers and sisters, that Peter and the other disciple, they spent three years with the Lord. Amen? Before the Lord was crucified and the Lord had risen and then went back to heaven. Amen? And we can see, my dear brothers and sisters, that if we look at history, the crucifixion happens between 32 and 33 AD. Amen? So if you look at history, they put the time when Pontius Pilate was ruling Judea. So it goes around that time. And they put around that crucifixion happens 32 to 33 AD. And when Apostle Peter wrote this epistle, 1 Peter, it traced back to around 62 to 64 AD. So if you do the math, 64 minus 33, it's safe to say around 30, 31 years. Plus the three years that Peter spent time with Jesus. So makikita natin mga kapatid that 
Peter is now a mature Christian. Peter is now a grown-up Christian. Makikita natin, mga kapatid, that Peter has now at least 33 years of experience as a Christian. 33 years since Jesus told Peter, Come, follow me. Up until the time that Peter wrote this epistle in giving his summary. Giving the summary of his experience, of his encounter with Jesus. From the time when Jesus called them, come, in that giving of invitation, follow me, up until this time that he wrote this epistle, telling to us, mga kapatid, renewing that invitation, panibagong invitation, renewing that invitation, resonating that invitation of Jesus Christ with Peter in Andrew in that lake of Galilee, 33 years ago, when he wrote this epistle. But now, my dear brothers and sisters, especially for us here, gathered here, and the people tuning in online, after 2,000 years ago, we are being reminded again. We are being reminded. We are being exhorted once again with this same exhortation, my dear brothers and sisters, that says, to this, you were called. To this, you were called. And why were we called, my dear brothers and sisters? Amen? How are we, going, how are we called? Because Christ died for us. Amen? Christ died for us, and that is where the invitation lies that says, let us follow in His footstep. Amen, mga kapatid? No? Let us follow in His footstep. Amen? Hello, church? We are Christian. You, me, and everyone who declares to be one. There is that renewed invitation, mga kapatid, to follow in His footstep. Why? Apostle Peter said, because this was your calling. This was your calling. This is the very purpose that you were called. When Jesus called us 33 years ago in that Lake Galilee, when Jesus said, come. When Jesus said, come, that is a calling. And even us, when Jesus said, come, that is a calling. Amen. And Jesus died for us, Apostle Peter said, so that we may follow in His footsteps. Amen? Again, sa Tagalog, sabi nga natin, gas-gas na. But, every sinner, every person being born, mga kapatid, is a born sinner. You, me, everyone who were born are born sinner. Romans 3.23 For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. For all, all meaning mga kapatid, without any exemption. Amen. Even the Israelites, even the Jews, even the so-called chosen people, they are a sinner. Amen. So all who were born are born sinner. And all who were born sinner, like you and me, sabi niya ron, fall short of the glory of God. Amen. Our sin always put enmity between us and God. Our sin separates us in the presence of God, mga kapatid. Amen. Falling short of the glory of God means we are not in the presence of God. We are not in relations to God. We are separated from God. Amen. Simply, my dear brothers and sisters, that sin separates us from the life of God that He wants to give us. Because sabi niya rito, Romans 6.23, the wages or the penance of that separation from God, the wages of our sin is death. Amen. But mga kapatid, it, it, has, it, not, it is not 
needed to be that way. Hindi po kailangang maging ganun. It doesn't need to end that way. That you are a born sinner and the wages of your sin is death. Because sabi niya rin sa Romans 6.23, The gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Amen? The gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Romans 5.8, This happened, my dear brothers and sisters, while we are still sinners. Christ died for us. Imagine, mga kapatid. Ozam. Amen? It's as if you apply the job. The boss said, hindi ka pa man nai-interview, hindi ka man tinatanggap, eto na yung first month salary mo. Wow. Well done. Hallelujah. <laughs> hindi ka pa man nag apply hindi ka pa man ini-interview, dumarating na yung first month salary mo. While we are still sinner, while we are still separated from the glory of God, Christ died for us. Yan po yung gustong ipakita sa atin ni Apostle Peter, my dear brothers and sisters. Especially now, you do not need to be called first to realize that Christ died for you. You do not need to be Christian first to realize that Christ died for you. Amen. But with the knowledge, with the understanding that Christ died for you. My dear brothers and sisters, what we are ought to do, what we are ought to do, give that life back to Him. Amen po. When Jesus died for us, Apostle Peter said, for this reason you were called because Christ died for you. When Christ died for us, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 and 10, it says in there, my dear brothers and sisters, when Jesus Christ died for us, it made us a chosen people. Amen. Anyone or everyone believing in Him? Everyone believes here that Christ died for them? Anyone? Anyone? Amen? So the word of the Lord says that you are a chosen people. Amen? You might not be the most favorite at work. Hindi ka man pinapansin ng gusto mong magpapansinan. But I'm here to tell you that you are chosen. Amen. You are chosen people. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are God's special possession. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In our eyes, our children, our special possession. But there is greater good than that because God has your children as a special possession. Not only your children, but you and your parents before you and your parents' parents ahead of you. Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, Christ died for us in order for us to become His royal priesthood, His chosen people, His holy nation, His special possession. Amen. For what purpose? What is the purpose of that? Sabi niya rito, mga kapatid, Amen. In order for us to declare the praises of Him who called us out from that darkness. Who called us out. Why darkness, my dear brothers and sisters? Why darkness? Because everyone who sinned full short of that light, full short of the glory of God. So if you full short of the glory of God. You live in darkness. Amen? So my dear brothers and sisters, the Lord died for you 
in order for you to declare praises to Him. Amen. In order for us to start walking in the light. Amen po mga kapatid. Amen. Hallelujah. And sabi niya rito, after being called, mga kapatid, after being saved, no? Apostle Peter said, to this you were called because Christ suffered for you. To this you were called because Christ suffered for you. Pakilagay nga sa 21 to 21. Amen, mga kapatid. Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in His footstep. No? So ano yung, what, ano yung gustong sabihin ni Apostle Paul sa atin dito? What does Apostle Paul wants to tell us? That after being called, meaning after being ser saved, there is an invitation. And ano po yung invitation na yan, mga kapatid? To follow in His footstep. That invitation, mga kapatid, is that example. Amen? Is that example. And kung titignan natin, mga kapatid, yung word example na ginamit ni Apostle Paul, the word example that Apostle Paul used in that, if you look at the Greek context, mga kapatid, that is the Greek hypogramos. Ano po yung ibig sabihin nung Greek na hypogramos? Sa Tagalog, pambakat. Sa Tagalog, pambakat. Or writing under. Saan po applied ito, mga kapatid? You know, when you were young, and when you are learning to write the alphabet, it could either be, di ba mga kapatid, may mga books na mga dot, 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 dot. And you just have to follow it. Amen? You just have to follow it upang matutunan mo kung papaano magsulat. Ginagawa natin to. When Zep was home, ginagawa ni Mayan, gumagawa siya ng dot, 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 and just para... By tracing that dot, by following that dot, matututo ka kung papaano ka mag sulat. And that's what Apostle Peter meant dito mga kapatid. That example, that hypogramos. Amen, mga kapatid. Upang sa ganun, by the example of Christ, matututo tayo kung papaano mamuhay. Katulad ni Kristo. Amen, mga kapatid? Amen? Ang sabi niya rito, mga kapatid, dito, pattern ng pagsusulat in order for us to learn how to write. But, as patterning our life in the life of Christ, mga kapatid, by doing that, sabi ni Ate Grace, Ate Grace, ano yung sinabi mo kanina? Daily, daily, Amen? And when you do daily psychology, mga kapatid, in order for someone to learn a gain skill, alam mo yung kailangan mong gawin? You need to do that every time. You need to do that every time and it will create a chain. And if it creates a chain that become your skill, riding a bicycle, you do not just sit in the bicycle and Wish. No. You need to constantly practice riding that bicycle and it will create a neurotic chain and that will become a skill if it has been completed. Amen. So, ganun din dito yung example. Hypogramos, mga kapatid. That by patterning our life in the life of Jesus daily, mga kapatid, we will be like Christ. Amen po. So mga kapatid, what does it mean to truly follow Christ? No, What does it mean to follow the footstep of Christ? What does it mean to follow the footstep of Christ? Mga kapatid, we need to strictly follow everything. Amen. Again, hypogramos, 
kung ginagaya mo yung letter A, di ba? Ganyan. So you need to do that. You need to follow everything. Paano ang letter A, iba ang ginagawa mo? Baka makaimbento ka ng bagong letra. Maging famous ka pa. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So what does it mean to truly follow Christ? To truly follow Christ, mga kapatid, means follow everything about Christ. Mark 12.30, na pag-usapan na naman natin to last week. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Amen. So in order to be able to truly follow Christ, dapat you have to do it with all your heart. Dapat you do it with all your soul, with all your mind. Dapat you have to do it with all your strength. Amen, mga kapatid. Amen? Diba? Boys, ilang bises, how many times that we go out and travel and we do convoy. If you are not following every turn, left turn and right turn, that the one is in front, my dear brothers and sisters, iba yung mararating mo. Amen. Iba yung mararating mo. Imbis na, uh, ano na yun? Imbis na Chesel Beach yung marating mo, magtaka ka bakit nasa Burnham Lake ka na. Amen. So, we need to follow everything, mga kapatid. Exodus 20 verse 30, it says in there, You shall have no other gods before me. Ako lang dapat, sabi ng Panginoon. You shall have no other gods before me. Amen. To follow Christ daily, gagamitin ko yung sinabi ni Ate Grace kanina. Luke chapter 9 verse 23. Welcome po, Delion family. Ano yung sabi ni Ate Grace kanina sa Luke chapter 9 verse 23? If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and carry his cross daily and follow me. Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, ang understanding ko doon sa denying ourselves, mga kapatid, is anything that is contrary to the Lord. Anything and everything na hindi naaayon sa kalooban ng Panginoon. Anything and everything that can take away our focus to the Lord. That can disturb yung ating um, focus sa Panginoon. Yung magdi-disturb ng concentration natin sa Panginoon. Amen. So denying yourself, mga kapatid. Amen po. Denying yourself, lahat po, ng contrary sa Panginoon. Amen. And sabi ni Ate Grace, daily, meaning hindi lang during Sunday, and then Monday to Saturday, hindi na kristyano pag nasa trabaho. Mga kapatid, there is no such thing as halfway Christian. There is no such thing na halfway Christian. The Lord forbids that where one of your foot is in the Lord and one of your foot is in the world. Sabi ng Panginoon, it's not gonna work. Amen. Matthew chapter 6 verse 24. No one can serve two masters at the same time. Amen po? No one can live in two worlds at the same time. You are living in the reality, in the glory of God, and you are living in the fantasy, in the sin of the world. It's not gonna happen, mga kapatid. It's not gonna happen. Amen? In order for us to be able to truly follow the Lord, Mga kapatid, sabi niya rito, John 15, 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. So what the Lord wants us to do is to remain in Him. Remain in Him and you will bear much fruit. Bearing much fruit, mga kapatid, means you will be successful in following me. Ilan po sa atin, mga kapatid, na matagal ng kristyano, 
Ilan po sa atin mga kapatid ang naniniwala na nanampalataya na sa Panginoon? But we keep on failing in following the Lord. But we keep on being stumble in following the Lord. You know where the difference is? Sometimes, and it, it's bound to happen sometimes, sometimes we operate in our own free will. We operate in our own strength, mga kapatid. Mga kapatid, it will never work. It will never work. We might have the best intention, but if we operate within our own context, it means it's not gonna happen. You know, the life of the Pharisees, we study the life of the Pharisees time and time again. If you look at the life of the Pharisee, they have a very strong, um, they have a very strong principle. They have a very strong code na naka-anchor naman sa Biblia about Old Testament. But the thing is, they rely so much in their own understanding that they fail to realize that this Messiah that were promised, that they know that they have read, was indeed coming out of Nazareth. This Messiah was indeed coming out of Nazareth. And they did not believe that. So my dear brothers and sisters, no, in order for us to be effective and successful in following the Lord, sabi niya dun, we need to rely in Him. Amen, church? Again, I just want to encourage us. First Peter chapter 2, 21. You were called. You became Christians as you call yourself now because Christ died for us. And now that Christ died for us, Christ is showing us this typogramos, typogramos example, mga kapatid. Amen, mga kapatid. No? So, Mga kapatid, ilang taon ka mang kristyano or you might be a new Christian or this new this concept of following Him might be new to you. But there is a renewed call from this pulpit, from the throne of the Lord today, mga kapatid, to every one of us, to you, to me, people who are online, to follow in His footsteps. Amen. To follow in His footsteps. Sabi nga ni Ate Grace, Christ-centered. Amen. And if it's Christ-centered, follow Christ. Amen. When Christ say, jump, you jump. Amen. When Christ say, settle in wait, you settle in wait. Amen po mga kapatid. Look at the life of Israelites. There were times when the Lord said, be patient. All you have to do is go and march along Jericho. I'm sure on that day one, a lot of the Israelites were swearing to shout, Hallelujah! But the Lord said, there is time for everything. Be patient. Wait for my instruction. Amen. So mga kapatid, if ever you are sitting in here right now and said that, I'm burning out. And if you said that I've been a Christian for a while, I have this matter with the Lord for a while, I have this closed door meeting with the Lord and it seems that there is no resolution for a while, my dear brothers and sisters, there is a renewed call for all of us to settle back, calm down, and wait for the Lord's instructions. Amen. The most important is wait for the Lord's instruction. Follow His footstep. Amen. David was anointed king when he was 15 years old. But he did not ascend the throne until he is 30. How many of us in here who were anointed yesterday and they want that by tomorrow they are the king? Hindi ba yun yung testimony ni Brother Les kanina? Uh, katulad niya, parehas tayong lahat. We always want that express. 
Kaya nga gusto na nating mag-Uber because we do not want the jeep. We want express. Kaya nga na-develop yung mga van because we do not want the bus. We want the express. But sometimes if the Lord told you, enter into that bus, that old bus, na walang air condition, you better because the glory of the Lord is where He directs you to be. And where He directs you to be, He will make sure that His presence is gonna be with you. Moses said, Lord, we will not go if you are not gonna go with us. Lord, we are not gonna move an inch if your glory will not move with us. So meaning, mga kapatid, Lord, lead and I will follow in your footstep. Amen. Let's welcome the music team, church. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. And uh, let us worship. I will worship. And she, ano? She brought her Kantahin natin yung kanta niya. Let's stand up church. Hallelujah. Praise you Lord. The Lord is not finished yet. Amen. The Lord is not finished yet, mga kapatid. There is a renewed call and invitation to every one of us, followers of Christ, or in simple term, Christians. You, me, at sa lahat po na sa atin ngayon, even people tuning in online to follow in His example. And my dear brothers and sisters, Hallelujah. Let's be in the presence of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, I exhort and challenge us all that in every situation of life facing us, let us consciously ask ourselves, if Jesus is in this situation, what would Jesus do? In the midst of your triumph, in your victory, in your challenges, tribulations, what would Jesus do if He is in the face of this situation?